Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode we're going to uh, sort of start reassembling some of the smaller bits on the car, and then we're going to give you a wrap up for the year and uh, let you know how we've gone and what we've got coming next year. All right, guys, welcome back. And those of you watching last week will have seen that I did the uh, service on the Ferrari engine. If you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up and think about subscribing. It definitely helps us out at the channel. Um, there are a few questions and queries about uh, things I did last week. Uh, some people were mentioning that um, there's another way to change the belts. Um, I was happy enough doing it this way on, on this engine because everything's locked anyway and, and the way that I did it, so I was quite comfortable with that. But uh, one of the ways to change the belts is um, on, on engines, uh, some people are saying, is you can actually slice the belt around uh, through the middle and take half the belt off, slide the new belt half on, then you can cut the rest of the old belt off and then slide the belt on the rest of the way. For me, that was actually gonna be harder than uh, just doing it the way I did it, locking it off properly. You've gotta lock it all off properly anyway. Um, it just helps, if you're worried about uh, getting things out of time and, and things happening, uh, that I can see is, is a way to make sure that nothing moves. But again, you also wouldn't be able to do it on this engine because this actually has a, um, uh, this pulley here has a flange on it, so you wouldn't be able to slide the other belt over the top anyway. So um, yeah, some engines you might be able to do that. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happier doing the the, uh, the Ferrari recommended way. Um, one of the other things that uh, came up, a couple of people mentioned changing the cam seals. Now I actually have the cam seals, I actually have some replacement cam seals, which go on the end of the cams to uh, basically seal off any oil between the, uh, the end of the cams coming out and inside these cam covers. The reason I haven't changed them is because there's a whole rabbit hole to open up if I do. Basically, you can't just unbolt these pulleys because there's uh, variable valve timing variators in here and these are all adjustable and you, you can't just take that, that part of the pulley out and the main way to do it is to pull the entire cams out and pulling the cams out is just a whole bunch of worms that I don't need to get into. Um, they look like they're in good condition. Uh, I don't see any major issues with them. So at this stage, I'm happy enough to leave them. You can get to this quite easily in this car as opposed to on the Ferrari. Um, it's a little bit more difficult because you're really sort of tucked in behind the seats and, and you don't have very good access. In this car, this part of the engine is actually quite easy to access. So I could do it in the, in the car in the future if it becomes an issue, but uh, at this stage I'm happy enough to uh, uh, let it roll and not go down that rabbit hole if I don't have to. So moving forward, I still haven't put the gaskets or anything on these cam covers at all. These are just sitting in place just to mostly uh, cover everything up and make sure it's all uh, not gonna get any stuff in it. And I also usually have some uh, plastic over the top to uh, keep it protected from dust and uh, stuff. But for today, I think we wanna get back onto the car and start putting some of the basic bits and pieces back together again. All right, so it's time for some of the fun stuff, which means uh, starting to add back the wiring loom that I made previously. Now it's not terminated, but uh, it's time to start laying this out in the car and putting it where it's finally gonna be. It's exciting to actually be putting things in that are gonna stay there. Yes. All right, so the basic wiring loom is in. There's all these things like, uh, this is all gonna go to my center console controls that uh, need to be terminated. All the ends need to be terminated, but the basic lines are 
clipped in and up under the dash and going through, so it is looking pretty good at this stage. All right, so now it's time to start fitting some of these shiny bits from Classic Alpha, and uh, you can see here I've got this nice shiny boot release. Uh, many of you might have seen that I actually moved it to this driver side, as this is a right-hand drive car, so I've moved it to the right-hand side of the car. So I'm gonna fit that now, run the, uh, the new cable through. So we'll do that for the boot and for the bonnet. So now I've got the boot release cable installed, the, ne uh, the next thing I need to fit is the actual catch that fits to the boot itself. And uh, that's one of these things. The trouble is, is, this is one that I actually borrowed from Tim at Zoo Autocraft. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna make my own one up. I managed to uh, uh, design up and plasma cut out a, uh, a little base plate, which is exactly the same as the original. So I've got a bit of stainless rod here that hopefully will be nice and strong and I'm going to bend it up to match that and uh, weld up my own. All right, well, that looks remarkably similar to the original one. Boot is on. Panel gaps are perfect. And now the, uh, the rubber seal is in. It's just, it fits. Yeah, and it looks good. And it pops. The pup works. It needs to be slammed a bit to uh, get in there. The rubbers are still all very fresh and new, so it's quite a, uh, a tight fit, but I'm happy. So while we're here, I think uh, we might fit some tail lights and stuff because yes. All right, well, I've just done a few little bits and pieces on the car today, you know, just sort of tinkering away at some of the boring little bits. I didn't know where to stand, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I thought uh, most of today would just be a bit of a wrap up and actually explain how much we've actually got done this year. There was a lot of uh, stuff on all of the projects. So uh, first of all, Harry. Harry, at the start of the year, we did the electric air conditioning, um, put it in, which is uh, which was working great, but uh, I think I must have done one of the crimps badly and it's leaked out the gas. I've got to regas it and uh, double check my hoses, which is typical of me. Mm -hmm. It was worth doing, it's worth doing twice. <laughs> I didn't um, want to say that, I was leaving it for you to say. Speaking of doing things twice, I did the, the dash on Harry. I redid it because I didn't like the first go and it's looking much better now. So that, uh, um, that was another sort of, you know, detailed project of trying to make it uh, all nice and uh, the interior just being a nicer place to be, which which it is now. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's been a lot of time in this. Remember the trying to get the windscreen in all those years ago? Oh yeah, and crack, yes. <laughs> painful memories of the windscreen. Old and painful memories. Uh, and I did the Tasmanian trip. So eight days traveling around Tasmania where Harry ran perfectly the whole time. Um, that was a really, really good trip. I 
I had a lot of fun. Mrs. Jeff, not so much being well, stuck wasn't at there. home. She was stuck at home. But she would not enjoy being a passenger in that trip at all. No, I get car sick. <laughs> so she would not be cute I that. get motion sickness. It's not pretty. <laughs> um, I redid the exhaust more recently. Uh, that was the third exhaust or fourth exhaust. I can't remember now. And uh, fourth. That was the fourth exhaust. Then the Adelaide trip with Harry. Uh, going down there, doing the uh, getting through the floodwaters to get there, having some issues, in, but driving all the way home. And, and Harry still, besides some issues that I caused, it actually <laughs> ran quite well. <laughs> have done quite a lot just on on harry on the uh, on the unseen project that doesn't spend much time in the garage this uh year going on to the other project that's been sitting in the background that's been weighing over my head literally a lot of the time uh most of most of the year was the rockstar and uh i got a bit less done on the rocks this year than i would like there were lots of issues with leaks and things like that that uh, that I, I tackled and uh, I think I've pretty much got on top of them. I think I've finally worked out the overheating issue but that's, uh, there's another episode to come that I've uh, pretty much wrapped up now so we will uh, go on to that. We had starter motor issues which I redid the starter motor um, and uh, of course I removed a lot of the ugly off of the car and made it look a little bit better. So um, yes it has sat aside but there is going to be more on the uh, on the Rockster soon. I just wanted to get through the painting phase on the Alfa Ferrari, which is why the Rockster sort of sat on the sidelines for a lot of the time because the sanding and <laughs> bodywork phase sanding. is is really tedious and really hard to film. So I thought I'd try and get that done, uh, and sort of that's why the the Rockster got ignored a bit. And also I felt I was starting to get a bit burnt out. I just needed to sort of take a little bit of uh, time off of some of these projects and uh, yeah, that's given me time to sort of wrap my head around the Rockstar, but it is coming back. And another thing on the Rockstar also is I, I fitted that uh, Powertune digital dash, which which is amazing and that's all working beautifully now. And uh, yeah, that's a project I'm going to do more on next year. So on the Alpha, we actually got it might not look like a lot, but uh, there was a lot of stuff done this year. So on on the Alpha, obviously, it wasn't painted. No. Um, I had to do all the chassis bracing. I went through all that. I seam welded it. I built the new exhaust. Um, smoothed out the bumpers and uh, uh, stone guarded it. Primed it. Did all the bodywork. Primed it again. Went through, tidied it up. Primed it again. <laughs> then I painted it. Then I you know, cleared it. Then I went through and fixed a bunch of the mistakes and did the stripes and then fixed the mistakes and did the stripes again and then fixed the mistakes again and then cleared it again. So it's had lots and lots of uh, iterations of the paint, but uh, it's now looking really good. And then um, obviously sound deadening and servicing the Ferrari engine, painting this thing up, and, and now we're finally putting it back together again. And I am definitely looking forward to using it and uh, yeah. Using when do you, when do you think that will happen? I what sort of roughly? The, the, I'm not putting a deadline on things because it takes what it takes to do it right. Are we talking like six months? Are we talking six years? Are we talking... Hopefully in the next six months or so I can actually get it running. I mean, okay. there's a lot cool. of interior work to do. Uh, there's still things that I need to sort out like um, gauges in the dash, the the uh, the centre column, the uh, or the, sorry, the steering column, uh, getting all of the indicators and things like that to work. Because obviously I've got a Toyota steering column, but I don't want to put an ugly Toyota steering sort of you know plastic steering column on there with the ugly Toyota indicators and stuff like that. I want it to look like the classic Alpha stuff, but the classic Alpha stuff doesn't fit that. So there are lots of things that I need to do to make this car work that the original stuff is not going to work for. And I don't just want to put a screen in the middle of the dash. It's not right for this sort of car it's not the style i want to go for i want gauges i want things that actually work as far as the gauges go the original gauges are both cable driven which is not going to work with uh, the electronic signals that i get from um, this engine so all that stuff has to be rethought redone made to work with this car so there's still lots of things to make 
to make a car like this not just slap an engine and get it running and say it's good it, there is a lot of things to make it so it's actually a nice usable car yeah like you i think one thing that we've really learned is better to go a bit slowly yes take your time get it right yes even though i do do it twice or three yeah times. <laughs> but i want to get it right possible. it's like buying the right tool for the job it's better to spend a little bit extra and get the right one and have it buy the cheap one and then having it Break having to still buy the most expensive one again afterwards yes it, you know what i mean like it happens all the time economy, it, yeah. it's a false economy yeah so, Absolutely. so yes better take your time and just sort of get the right thing for the job yes and uh many of you have asked and yes i have already got plans for the next build or the next couple of builds i've got uh, i've got a couple of things in mind i'm still tossing up exactly which way i'm going to go but uh that is all uh yeah that's all been definitely in my mind but there's still a fair bit to go on the alpha because even once i get it driving it's still going to be shakedowns and uh sorting out minor issues because these things will always have mm. issues that rear their heads once they actually get on the road and it's a it's the difference between making it a uh, a nice seamer build where everything's sort of slapped together and it looks the part and it might actually move and an actual finished usable product that actually you know that you will actually want to drive and use and and uh, and all the rest of it besides taking it for a you know three minute spin to cars and coffee or something i want to actually road trip this and i actually want to use it the way it's that's why i built it so there's lots to come hopefully you guys will enjoy uh coming along for the ride yeah um it's been great having you along so far and uh thank you to all of you who make nice comments at mrs jeff <laughs> yes <laughs> keep uh, watching for that special where i do everything in italian <laughs> I would like to see that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. You could do it in French. Mrs. Jeff does speak fluent French, but uh, but not uh, Italian. But not Italian. So um, uh, hopefully you'll join us for that one. Uh, we uh, we're wishing you guys all a very Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Uh, this should come out on Christmas Day for a lot of you. So yep. uh, yes, Merry Christmas. Stay safe on the roads and yeah and. Um, um, and we're looking forward to a fun next year. Yeah, 2023. Yes. I think it's... Let's do it. Let's, let's get into it. All right, Can't guys. Can't wait. Okay. All right, thanks, guys. See Bye, you guys. Time.